world where achievements and accolades motivate us to do more and be more, we're often left wondering, is this really it? Deep inside, you know there is more to life. You're ready to leave behind the old push your way through and claim the deeper life that's calling you. That's where we excel. We're your hosts, Stephanie Allen and Marin Oslak. And this is the Soulful Leader Podcast. Sit back and relax as we share the shortcuts we've uncovered to help you make shift happen. Welcome back to the Soulful Leader Podcast. My name is Marin and I'm here with Stephanie. And recently one of our listeners asked us to do a an episode on expectations. And how do you manage expectations? What what is an expectation? And Stephanie and I have been chatting about this for probably the last week. And we probably we have a, enough for probably three or four different episodes. And and I think we're just gonna drop in and, and really be present to what where do expectations impact our lives and how how can we use that how can we what is what's there for us what is the importance of that for us as we move forward as soulful leaders in our own lives and i think you know this is such a great conversation because expectations like first of all where do they come from like who's Mm. making those expectations is it you know, your, your soul, or is it your ego? Um, Is it somebody else? Is it exactly, is it inside you or is it coming from somewhere else that you think you have to live up to and how do they really affect our lives and our relationships to ourselves and each other? Because they, they really do when we live from that place of expectations. So this is going to be fun to unpack. My question is, how do you know if you're living from a place of expectations or, what is what's the alternative hmm because so the reason i ask that is we're raised into a culture by a family and there are this is the way that you do things and here's the what your options are all of those are expectations this is the way you do something is an expectation that you will do it the same way or that you will then improve on it or that like so and if you don't reach that expectation, there's mm, repercussions. Yeah. You know, you're either going to feel ashamed or if you exceed them, you know, then nobody notices you. You don't feel valued, don't feel appreciated or it, like there's just so much. Oh, my gosh. There's so much energy tied up into expectations, isn't it? And, 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 and I just want to clarify, expectations are not the same as intentions. Those yeah. are very So would you say that that would be the alternative to living an expectation would be living an intention? Absolutely. Because an intention is inside you. And so it's your own personal measurement. And it's it's more of a quality, meaning it's like, you know, my, when we say, oh, I just want to be happy. Well, Okay, that can be kind of an, but that's also an expectation. Like, well, what does happiness mean anyway? And and how will you know when you're happy? And mm. there's so many questions around that. And, and instead of turning it inside, it's like, well, what does happiness, what does it feel like? And who do I need to become to feel that way? See, this is when you have total control with that. And, and there's a development of skill and unfolding, but there's a question there that is ever evolving. Yeah, I think that for me, when you know, when we first started to talk about this last week, and I started to peel the layers of the onion of like, this is a great question, I, I really want to <clears throat> dig into this. And when I looked at some of the expectations in my own life that I, you know, first of all, there has to be an awareness that that I might even be living an expectation. You know, I think that a lot of people aren't even aware of the fact that they're living somebody else's expectations or even their own, or that like, even to to start questioning that, just Mm. that alone starts to bring up all these options. And then for me, the next layer was where am I living 
especially for me, what I started to look at this week is where am I living somebody else's expectations for me that like, <clears throat> I have a great example. Right now, I have injured my knee. And there is an expectation that I will go to a doctor and get it diagnosed and get it fixed. And I'm taking a slightly different path. I have seen a doctor and I am in the process. It just is that I've chosen to be in the process and also do an internal journey and start looking at what does that mean? Why did I injure my knee? And what is it calling forth in me? I think what I'm hearing you say too, Marin, is that there's not an outside answer for it. What you've turned is turned inward to be present. Very much so. And to listen deeply to what is your soul? What, what is this experience? Instead of this happening, like we've said in the past, instead of this happening to me, it's happening for me. So I need to be present to what's going on in my knee. Not, I, I want to, I, you know, I want to care for it and I want to understand it so they don't keep re-injuring it, but there's a gift here. And what if I could unpack that gift? That takes space and it takes presence. And our culture is not, and I repeat, it is not conducive to sitting still and being present with love. Not at all. And I feel that from the people that I talk to because, you know, oh, I injured my knee. First of all, there's a lot of sympathy. And then what have you done? Mm -hmm. Who have you seen? Have you seen a doctor? Have you done this? Have you done, you know, it's like, and it comes from well intentions, good intentions of people care about me. And I love that. I absolutely love that. My quest over this week, since we started to talk about expectations is realizing that there's an expectation even inside of me that I've taken on that I have to get this fixed and be over it. This is like, this is interfering with my quote unquote life. And here's that fix it mentality again too, right? That's right. the expectation that you're broken. And the, the fact that it's interfering with my life. And what if I didn't look at it? So, you know, like going to our conversation, what we're having right now of like expectations of recognizing that these are all just expectations. They're not hard, fast rules. They're not the way that I have to do anything. And yet there's a lot of pressure for me to do it along these lines. And I love that one of our listeners asked us this because I not only have had the opportunity to look at my knee from a different perspective, I am now looking at the whole conversation around my knee and the fact that this is a different way of thinking about something in my life of instead of it's interfering with my life, what if it's a part of my life and it's, it's giving me, like you said, there's a gift in it, right? And we always talk about that. Oh, there's a gift in it. And this is a gift for my whole life, not just, okay, go get, go get that taken care of because it's an interference and then get on with your life. <laughs> There's so much of that. And you can see the repercussions of that in our world, in nature, with relationships with each other, with, you know, struggle with finances, mental health, all it's, it's like, what would happen if you just sat down and felt it mm -hmm. and were present to the gift that's behind it? We have to be still. And I'm telling you, like people who know me, you know how much I don't like being still. And I'm not a still person. But yet, it's like, it's almost like, I, I read this one time. I'm going to come back to this. But I read this one time. It's like, this was in the 12-step programs. And it says, if you know, the moment you let go of expectations, your serenity will improve. Mm. Peace. Peace is also stillness. You, you, that comes from within you, but it's like, it's like taking a glass of water and you're stirring it up, stirring it up, stirring it up, stirring it up. It never gets a chance to settle. Sometimes you just need to stop and allow everything just to settle so that you can allow the clarity to come. Whether we call it meditation, whether we call it being out in nature and just breathing in the fresh air or like it, all of that is a mindfulness, pra a meditative practice. And it does require being still. And that's our mind is like that sediment in the glass that's being stirred up all the time. And every time we get on, you know, social media or every time we pick up the phone and call somebody that is like a, a lower level conversation, like complaining or gossiping or different things like that, you're just stirring it up even more and you're adding even more. Where's the stillness? And what's it going to take to make you stop, to make us all stop, 
and we just had a pandemic. We were still, and it brought stuff up. And here's the thing. Yes, it brought stuff up. And everyone's like, oh, but I didn't want to bring that stuff up. I've been stuffing that stuff for years. What the <laughs> hell? Why are you making me sit still and make me feel all that crap? Damn it. I worked really hard 50 years of like not doing, but that's the thing. It's like, we need to bring it up because the longer it stays stuck in ourselves, the more dis-ease it creates. And that disease, like a virus, it then makes us toxic and we spread it. Mm. We don't mean to, but we spread it. And it's like, when, 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 what is it going to take to let go of those expectations and be driven by the outer of whether or not I'm good enough, whether or not I'm doing enough, whether or not I'm of value you're already a value. You're already worthy. You're already enough. We all are. But we need to sit still to remember that. And from even for, you know, I mean, we've been talking like from a personal perspective and we oftentimes separate our personal development from our business development. And I'm going to tie those two together real quick because during the pandemic, one of the things that we noticed was that as our businesses closed down and our we took more time is that our planet started to heal. And from a business perspective, one of the things that very few people were prepared for the pandemic. And so we we run along this track we're fast you talked about like our brains going 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 going. That's how we do our businesses too. And there is a cost and not being able to see what's coming because we're so caught up in what was and what like all the stuff 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 we got to do we got to go we got to blah 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 by being able to stop and be present say for example like with my knee instead of doing something that may cause another problem 20 years down the line or even 10 years down the line or something unintentional because I just need to fix it and I need to fix it now and we need to take care of it because I need to get on with my life, which is what we do in business all the time. Take care of that. I just need you to fix it. Go make it make it go away. And then there's an unintentional consequence to that. It's oftentimes when we fix one problem without being present to it and taking the time and making the space, we create four other problems that we didn't realize that we were creating. So now our one problem that we thought, aha, I solved it. We actually created four more in its place that I'm now running after. Mm. And if you think about your, like you mentioned the, the brain in the, you know, like we're stirring the, the, <laughs> the glass of water and we've got all that stuff going, it just adds to it. And so in business, like for me, taking this time out this week or next week or next, you know, it might take six months of my life. I don't know how long it's going to take. And I'm willing to keep showing up to it and seeing where spirit is leading me because then I won't have to deal with four other problems that came out of the fact that I wasn't listening. And I'll do that with my business. And that's why like we had, a couple of episodes ago, we had Jill and Daniel on and Jill talked about that in business and she's done amazing things with top level businesses, you know, like multi a million and multi billion dollar corporations and has changed their trajectory like overnight by doing this. So it is about business and it is about personal and, and both are true. And we're not supposed to keep them separate. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. our reason for being is the thread that unites everything. You know, how many times have it, both of us, we've, we've worked with clients before Marin that people say, well, I'm a different person at home than I am at work. Right. And that disconnect. And I, I want to talk about, cause you mentioned about will, cause there is that disconnect. It's like, we can have a personal will, my personal will power to lose weight, to exercise more, to make more money, to, to take care of the kids, whatever the personal will. That's, the, and that's important. And then there's also the soul's will, the divine will, the reason you're here. And the two are not meant to be separate. Mm. They're meant to be united. And when you think of it, in the chakra, by the way, the throat chakra is a lot about willpower. And, you know, we need willpower to make change. You know, the, the, the chrysalis, 
of the caterpillar. It needs a willpower. It needs to believe that there's something greater on the other side of that chrysalis for it to find the inner strength and the courage to break out. And most of us don't exercise that internal willpower. And I had a meditation the other day that when I was meditating on the chrysalis and it said, you know, to me, Stephanie, <laughs> Stephanie, don't hope that you'll become the butterfly. Know it. It's encoded mm. in your DNA. It's encoded in all of us. And so what's going to require that? And so I love those two, three questions that Daniel had asked us, you know, the, the what, what are you here to do? Who are you here to become? And why? The what, the who, and the why? Like those are such powerful questions. And if you could ask those questions. And so when I talk about my personal will, I can say, you know, what do I want? What do I want? That's the self-centeredness, you know, but also what does my soul want for me? That's a different question. And I think asking the why question helps us to unfold the what do I want? And then if I ask the why, I get to a deeper level of that and the deeper level of that and the deeper level because <laughs> our soul wants for us what we also want. It's not two different things. And there may be a deeper, a deep, there, there definitely is a deeper level to it. And it may not look on the surface like we think it should look because the soul wants something more for us. And I think when we get back to that expectations, it's like the expectations are coming from that personal will. And if we can ask ourselves why it's going to take us drop, which by the way, so back to the neck, right? So you're up here in the head, which by the way, anyone who is having like headaches or like vision, hearing different stuff like tension like that, it's often because we're too much in our head. And the neck is the bridge that drops down into our heart, which is where the soul, our essence, our reason for being is in there. Most of us don't make that journey. And we get stuck in our personal will because we're afraid to let go of those expectations because we're going to let ourselves down or we don't feel safe. There's so many reasons, right? And I can so relate to this. Yeah, it's scary. It's scary. And yet what's scary is that the I, the personal I, is scared to death of dying. That's why they say, Public speaking, people are more afraid about public speaking than actual physical death. Why? Because when you get up on stage and you are transparent and vulnerable, it's the death of the eye of the self. Mm. And we will hold tight and rigid to that. And that's the false self. And to align that, that lovely personal will with the divine will, that's when we can let go of expectations. So when things aren't working out, in the way that we want them to work out because that's our personal will, right? It's like, dang, I was all planned out of this and it's, you know, dang, I got a detour. What the heck's that about? You know, then we could say, okay, what is my soul? Why, why is this happening? Not why from a victim place, but why from a place of, for what purpose is my soul asking for me to show up? Is there someone I need to become more? You know, I'm going through some, some rough, you know, some rough times in my life right now too. And I'm asking myself, like, why, when we forget our why, like, why did I say yes to this? Or why, why am I doing that? Or why is this important to me mm. and to really ask both from the personal, but also like God put this in my heart for a reason. For what purpose did God put that for there for me? Maybe the very thing that, cause I can say, oh, pff, I'm done with it. I'm so not doing this anymore. I'm out of here. Da, 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 da. You know, quickly rebel and, mm, mm, mm. and that's where, you know, a lot of us spend a lot of energy, including myself. And it's <laughs> exhausting. It's exhausting. Instead of and, asking another question, right? Well, the other thing is when we quickly exit stage left, right? Whether right. it's from a job or a relationship, we get fed up. We're like, ah, pff, forget this. I'm out of here. We're just going to recreate that. We might get, you know, a couple years of, of leeway or we might, we might not even, right? And we're just going to recreate that same thing again, because there's a reason that our soul called it forth in us. It's so that we could grow. It's, it was a doorway for us. And we went, I am not taking that doorway. Bye. Well, that doorway is going to come up again. Exactly. He's like, okay. So spirit says, great. You're not taking that doorway. Well, how about this one? It's exactly the same, different color. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same. Yeah. Open the door. Oh, look, same stuff. 
Right. Now you have to do it again and do it again and do it again and do it again. And it's like, oh, maybe the question is like, why would, why would spirit put this spirit would never give you something. Your soul would never give you something. I've heard this before. Not that you cannot handle, but that, that you are actually meant to uncover the gold within yourself, which is going to help you overcome. So I always say, you know, let's use this as school. It's like, we think that in grade six, maybe you're in grade six and you get a math problem and you're like, great, I mastered, I got a hundred percent. You don't think that grade seven is going to be harder and grade 10, 11 and 12 aren't going to be harder. It's like, that's our soul. It's like, it's supposed, we're meant to evolve. That's why we call, we call ourselves evolving leaders because we're meant to grow. And it's like, instead of resisting it, which by the way, creates suffering, the more you try to resist a moving target, the more exhausted you're going to be. And so that's spirit. It's moving in you. It's life. If you start to allow, so antidote to expectations, surrender. Mm. Surrendering to that movement and say, drop in deeper, go beyond your neck. If you've got neck pain and tension and sore throat and shoulders, drop down even deeper because your soul totally put that in the way so that you can lift it and you can become the beautiful, extraordinary butterfly that you are meant to happen and to become. Trust it. What I love about this is um, I now have this image of kind of like, I want to say seek and destroy. And I don't mean it in a, in like a, a violent way. And I'm going to start being more present to where are the expectations in my life because they're all doorways. And so if we can think of them as opportunities of every time I notice that I'm living in expectation or I feel a should coming on or a, like maybe an ought to, you know, an ought to attack is, <laughs> is imminent. It's like, oh, thank you. That's a doorway because I see that that's an expectation and I don't know what it means and I can surrender to it and be aware of it and dig deeper into it. And if I can do it in a playful way of like, I'm sitting in a playground and, you know, it's like a little bug crawls by and I want to get really interested in it and follow it where it heads or, you know, watching the, watching a caterpillar morph into a butterfly, how fascinating that is and we get really in 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 into that and we're like we're now ca collecting monarchs so that we can hatch them and watch them in our houses which i love because they're endangered right so there's more butterflies out there what if we did that in our own lives and what if we allowed nature to guide us in exactly how we need to unfold ourselves yeah everything we need to understand every problem is already in nature what is it teaching us? What is it showing us? So, you know, that going back to the question of expectations, you know, what are they? And why do you have them? Where are they coming from? Are they coming from your, your ego, your personal will, or are they coming from the divine will, the soul? Like, where are they coming from? And, you know, really the path to self-realization <laughs> requires us to annihilate our ego. Mm. public speaking right the annihilation of ego not to say that everybody needs to go out and do public speaking but know that when you're feeling that fear when you feel that fear when you feel that anxiety that intrepidation it's because you are really at your edge and most of us think we're at a breakdown instead of mm -hmm. a breakthrough it's like you're ready to spread your wings and evolve into something extraordinary that you didn't even know possible I love that. I do too. So one of the things I know when I'm on those edge is that I'll get into a place. So here's what happened. I'll get into rebellion or resignation. Mm. And to me, those are two warning flags. Warning, warning. If I'm <laughs> rebelling, I know that's my angry little teenager inside that is really, really having a hard time with freedom, like, like wants it like crazy and is feeling trapped. And resignation is when that angry teenager has given up. Hmm. Now, if I want to be an adult in this world, I don't need to shame that teenager. That, she, that teenager has an amazing gift for willpower. So again, talking about the neck again, has an amazing will 
amazing, which is stubbornness, which is actually a really high quality when we can use it towards something instead of against. So I know I need to go in and talk to this teenager within myself and go, okay, what are you needing? What are you afraid? What are you angry about? What's upsetting you? Why? Why are you angry? What, you know, who put expectations on you? It's okay. You're a teenager. You don't need to do this. It's okay. You got this. I got it. And it's such a wonderful meditation to be able to unpack this extraordinary part of myself. And so instead of being in rebellion and resignation of like, I'm hopeless, I can't do this. What is the opposite? Inspiration. Hmm. I don't know my future. You're not supposed to know your future. It would scare the bejeebies out of you. You'd go and you'd run and hide. You would never come out again. <laughs> it would freak you out, people. Like, we have got to let go of trying to figure everything out. It's limiting us and it's creating torment and it's putting expectations on us that are so unrealistic. And we don't get to enjoy where we are right now because we're so busy trying to figure out the future. Exactly. We're not present. We're not present to the beauty that's right in front of us that we're missing or in within ourselves. We're not present to that or we're not present to listening to our soul, the, the little the little whispers, because they are whispers. They're quiet. Yeah. I love that. As, as we progress through our week this coming week, and I'm talking to both me and Stephanie and all of you that are listening, I would encourage you to just become aware. There are no shoulds or you have to make it look like this. When Stephanie was just talking about her meditation, one of my thoughts was oftentimes <clears throat> we think, okay, well, in order to do the, here goes the fix it thing again. In order to be present to my expectations, I need to sit down and meditate and close my eyes and figure it out. <laughs> exactly. How many times have I heard that from people, including myself? Stephanie, would you be willing to read your poem that you read to me earlier? Absolutely. Because I think it's really, it's significant in this moment because this is this is what we do in our lives is we we chase after we chase after we chase after and we don't we don't give we don't give credence to the power of just being present so this is an ancient chinese um i don't know if you call it a tea i guess it's a teaching and it's translated by Thomas Merton. And I'm going to put it in the feminine because the feminine to me, and it's not about genderizing, it's just really looking at the yin or the inner that we are so developed in the outer. This is a way to really honor the internal. And it's called the flight from the shadow. There was a woman who was so disturbed by the sight of her own shadow and so displeased with her own footsteps that she determined to get rid of both. The method she hit upon was to run away from them. So she got up and ran, but every time she put her foot down, there was another step. While her shadow kept up with her without the slightest difficulty, she attributed her failure to the fact that she was not running fast enough. So she ran faster and faster without stopping until she finally collapsed. She failed to realize that if she merely stepped into the shade, her shadow would vanish. And if she sat down and stayed still, there would be no more footsteps. This is a very powerful thing for me because as Maren's talking about her knee, bone on bone, you know, wanting to move, wanting to go, I can relate to this too. I blew my knee a long, long time ago. And how often do all of us are just trying to grind it through and, hmm. and you know, we, we're afraid to sit still. And yet sitting still under the shadow with the shadow. You know, we are actually our light. We are light. 
And when we sit and face the darkness, not with trying to fix it or rebel against it or to be in resignation with it, but to truly understand it with love. That's our light is our love. The shadow transforms and it gives us a gift. But if we try to push it away, like I said, if we try to rebel against it, it actually gets stronger. If you ever try to resist against anything, it actually gets stronger. If you go into resignation and give up, and I mean give up, I don't talk about, surrender is different. If you give up and say, oh, why bother? It's never going to work anyway. And what's the point? You've, you've dropped your personal will. But if you're willing and you can trust in that innate wisdom of your soul. And that's where you surrender. And you surrender to the divine will and say, I can't do this for my personal will, but I know my soul can. I'm going to surrender to allow that higher self to bring the love and the light towards this. And it will lift you up. It will inspire you and draw you right up and through that chrysalis out into the butterfly. And that's and, where we trained expectations to knowing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because expectations, they do, they live in the ego. So I just, I, I'm very excited that we, we got that question from one of our listeners. And if I, I do want you all to think about two things this week, one, just be present to where where there's a few expectations in your life that maybe you don't need them anymore not that you have to do anything with them or just making a commitment to be present to expectations in your life and see what shows up and then if you would do us a favor and if there is something if we were to dedicate an episode of our podcast to a problem that you're currently facing what would that be and i would love to have you share both of your answers <laughs> what are the expectations that you noticed throughout the week um and is there something that you would love to see us cover uh share both and or either of those um in one of our communities we've got a community in linkedin we've got a community on facebook both of them at soulful leaders so you can find us there and please share us with a friend we would love to get our message out there to more people so that there are more people more of us that are evolving leaders we know that they're out there and the more we can build that community of those of us who are wanting to make a difference in the world and making a difference in ourselves in order to to make the change out there wow we will be unstoppable and we become the remedy that the world so needs yeah so thank you for joining us this week we'll look forward to ch chatting with you either on facebook or linkedin and we'll see you all next week in the soulful leader podcast And that wraps up another episode of the Soulful Leader Podcast with your hosts, Stephanie Allen and Marin Oslak. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to dive deeper, head over to our website at thesoulfulleaderpodcast.com. Until next time.